today. Uh, either you have just or you are about to discuss Huygens principle. Have you? Constructive and destructive interference. All right then. Um, harmonics. Dan says you'll be talking about harmonics um, overtone series in uh, the 112 class. Yes, no? All right. So this is introducing you to those things so that they'll make better sense to you when you get to them with Dan. All right. So first of all, constructive and destructive interference refers to uh, what happens when two waves are generated at the same time. They interact, and uh, depending on the phase of the cycles of the wave, they will either reinforce or cancel, or some of both. All right. So let's say you have a wave. Uh, I need a better marker than this. Let's see if I can make this work. There's a wave. Can you see it back there? And there's another wave. They're the same frequency, and therefore they have the same period, right? Mm -hmm. Takes the same length of time to complete a cycle. At each point along the way here, they're going to reinforce each other. The one is going to add to the other. So the result of these two happening at the same time is going to be a bigger wave. At every point along the cycle, they're going to reinforce each other. They're going to sum. They're going to add up the energy. All right? What if you have a second wave? Like that. Now, at every point along the way, for every bit of increase you have here, you have a decrease over here and so forth, right? This is called 180 degrees out of phase. You've heard that term, right? If totally in phase, they're going to totally reinforce. Totally out of phase, 180 degrees out, because you can take the sine wave and think of it as a circle from your marker. and. It's 360 degrees, right? So each of these cycles gets 360 degrees. 180 degrees out of phase means total cancellation. The resulting wave of these two is going to be what? Doubly, right? It's cancellation all through the cycle, so the result is that. That's theory land, and most of the time, it's not exactly in phase or exactly out of phase. You're talking about waves. Oh, can I try one of those? Yeah. This is a wimpy light blue. Thank you. Green is good. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. All right. So most of the time, what you've got is waves uh, that are partly in phase, partly out of phase. So some of the time they're adding, and some of the time they're canceling. All right? Now, that's known as constructive interference when they add, and destructive interference when they cancel. So far, so good? You're going to get this again. Huygens' principle tells us why an ultrasound beam takes the shape it does, the shape and character. Uh, and Huygens says, uh, he's the one who gave us a whole lot of, uh, of science, uh, including optics um, and the, uh, the, the beveled lens in white houses and so forth. Uh, he says that uh, you can think of the crystal or crystals at the probe face as a jillion little point sources. 
and they're all generating little wavelets that interfere with each other they cancel here they add here and the net composite result of all that constructive and destructive interference gives you the ultrasound beam okay which tends to take on a sort of semi hourglass shape as it narrows and then widens again so you're going to hear more about beam shapes and all that Huygens principle is the root of why they take that shape just naturally okay so constructive and destructive interference we use in the music biz to tune our guitars because when you have two waves let's see how this does they're not quite the same note right these are two disturbances of air and they're generating two waves and those waves are interacting can you hear the beat tone that's created by the conjunction of those two waves here again time they're adding part of the time they're canceling all right well these nifty physics tuning forks have an adjustable um, I want to use the right correct side here here we go okay I'm going to get it a little closer together now tone got slower didn't it they're closer together not not quite exactly in phase but close so those waves now are creating a slower resulting overtone right here it is again okay you can hear that kind of if you hear an airplane going overhead you may have noticed that sometimes it creates waves that reinforce and then cancel and you get a kind of uh, uh, undulating overtone with, with a, just an airplane going overhead. Listen to the world, it's full of overtones. So now if I move this up to where David put the little mark. It's even slower. So if I work with this, well, not, not there yet. Let me move this up a little. No over, no beat tone. Right? They just sound like they're exactly the same note. no beat tone. Make sense? Now, there are two things about the guitar that I drove down and got last year instead of going home like a good boy. When you're tuning a guitar, and it used to be that there were many more guitar players. Now there's only one, is it? When you tune a guitar, uh, the simple way to tune it is to go five frets up on the lower string and compare it to the open next string. You change that for the second string. So you compare those. And if you listen carefully, mm, sounds ugly, right? Part of that ugly sound is a fast beat tone. If I get a, if you listen carefully, there's a bit of a beat tone there. But you can make it sound even better if you use harmonics. Anybody hear the beat tone? It was kind of fast, so I'm going to bring it a little closer. It's subtle, but it's it's a little beat tone. And what you can do is 
just gradually creep up on it until the beat tone goes away. So that's another way to tune a guitar. And that leads to the other thing, harmonics. Every signal uh, has a fundamental frequency. Okay, it's the lowest frequency in the signal and it's the fundamental. And it's usually the strongest in amplitude. So I'm gonna take the uh, G string here. No, I'm gonna use the A. There we go. All right, and you can hear that A note which happens to have however many cycles per second. I'm going to guess it's 220. I think it's an octave below A440, which is concert pitch. Standard tune to this note concert pitch is A440 cycles per second. All right. Now, uh, hold this very carefully or you're in big trouble. All right. The vibrating string when you get the fundamental, vibrates in one big piece, right? The string's vibrating, we'll say, 220 times a second. All right? It's vibrating like that. But at the same time, the string is vibrating in two parts. And in three parts, and in four parts, I have to draw all these and then get the guitar back. And there we go, five parts. All these vibrations are occurring at the same time. You don't, you're not real conscious of the other vibrations when you play the open string. Coco Bolo, isn't that pretty? Mm. It's the Mexican version of rosewood, and Brazilian rosewood has become endangered, so we don't mess with that. But that's, that's a pretty good talk. Anyway, all right, so this is the open string vibrating in one big piece. And now if I divided the string in half at the 12th fret and barely touch the string, I get that chimey sort of note that's an octave up from the original one. Everybody know what octave means in music? It's Italian for eight. Eight scale notes. major scale, right? Same note, but an octave higher, right? This is A, that's A. But now it's vibrating twice as many times per second. Again, if I barely touch it at this node on the string, there's the harmonic note. So that's the second one down. I've eliminated this, the main single vibration by touching it at that node. Okay? If I go to the seventh fret, that divides the string into thirds. It's another node. And that happens to be five scale notes up from the fundamental. All right? That's an E note. So now the string is vibrating in three parts. Now I'll go to the fifth fret. That's four scale notes up. Touch it there, it's another node. Make it progressively harder to produce. Okay. And that's two octaves up, four times as many vibrations per second as the fundamental tone. Same note, it's an A note, but now it's two octaves higher. That means four times as many vibrations per second. Then the fifth fret divides it into five, e pardon me, the fourth fret divides it into five equal parts. That's 
three scale notes up, one, two, three, from the fundamental. And if you keep working at it, you can keep subdividing the string and eventually come up with the whole scale, all of the possible notes. And all those vibrations are going on right now. All those other sub-vibrations are going on at the same time. And it's the relative strength of those different harmonics that determine the tonal qualities of whatever you're making the vibration with. It could be a guitar, it could be a tenor sax, it could be in, uh, you know, the Wurlitzer organ at the Regal Theater in Chicago. You know, any instrument that produces vibrations has a tonal quality to it, a timbre, and that's governed by the relative strength of all those overtones in the vibrating string, the vibrating column of air, whatever. All right? In terms of electrical signals that you get, like from an EKG, that also has harmonics in it. And sometimes they get artificially reinforced because of the processing, and you get unwanted signal in the resulting output. So what do you use to try to do something about that? Filter. You'd have to do a Fourier analysis to determine where the offending frequency is, the one, the frequency that's getting reinforced too much. And in the case of an EKG, often it's 60 cycles, isn't it? From overhead lights or other circuitry, 60 cycle electricity. Or it could be 30 cycles per second, which would be muscle activity. All right, and if that gets artificially reinforced, then you need to filter it out. So that's why you should know about a little bit, just that they exist, about harmonics. All right, and I guess it's time to shut up. So that'll, that'll give you a little context and background for those concepts when you get to them with Dan.